Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Today, of course, is August 6, 2022, and we are talking about, in part, some of the historic maps and how cartographers have depicted the borderlands from the 18th well into the 20th century, as well as historic preservation, and all, all of this as affects the landscape we inhabit now, and much more. So you can, of course, find us live on air, online, live streaming on on ktsmradio.com as well as with full video on the El Paso History Radio Show Facebook page and YouTube channel as well as on our partner pages including the great Facebook page Remember in El Paso When because this is of course the place where we say Texas history begins in El Paso. We do have a history moment at the top of Hour 2 from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk. Today he talks about a notable historic El Paso architect. But of course joining us here in studio today we do have uh, Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation specialist with the city of las cruces and former historic preservation officer for the city of el paso thank you very much for joining us today thank you thank you andrew good to be back absolutely glad to have you on to talk about these interesting subjects here because there have been many times in even just recent programming that we have talked about how the landscape we inhabit is defined came to be but another very specific way because as much as people may think about, you know, the route they take to get home, the the ways, the roads they take, oftentimes the way people more uh, often than not think about it is on the map, how they think about the map and right. what that defines here. I mean, literally, what is a border besides a line on a map that in some cases may have some physical structures around it, but the actual then drawing of it and definition of it can be more than a little bit important and has in many cases, thankfully not directly here, but it was not necessarily a lack of potential, therefore, been the cause of wars, among other things. So uh, maps have, as much as, you know, pen and paper and pull pen is mightier than the sword kind of idea along with it, been very significant. Absolutely. And and one of the things that, that uh, we can discuss and get to here uh, a little bit later mm -hmm. is the fact uh, exactly what you're bringing up. Um at the conclusion of the war between Mexico and the United States mm. with the uh, Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, the language in the treaty specified about uh, how do you translate what is depicted on a map that was uh, jointly agreed to be used as the basis for the for dividing or creating a new border. But the language in there specified how do you translate, uh, I'm paraphrasing of course, how do you translate mm -hmm. what depicts on, on a map versus an actual point on the ground right and stretching that point between um one point of origin which happens to be north of el paso del norte to one marine league south of san diego all right so you have terra incognito you have one map that you're looking at and a lot of miles in between these two points and the basic question is is embedded in the treaty how does this actually translate on the ground? It's often <clears throat> said that in, in map making cartography and the study of it therein that it's pretty easy to tell what would be considered a, a natural boundary, maybe a cultural boundary, so to speak, or things defined by the natural landscape as opposed to something that has been said by, yeah, that looks good by someone drawing the map because mm -hmm. a point to me a natural feature that follows a direct, straight, north, south, east, west, any direction line. And I'm going to find you, show you a natural feature that probably doesn't exist because that just doesn't happen. So nice, neat, straight lines may look great on maps and are often been, I mean, particularly when you start looking at, uh, let's say, the difference even just between nationally, the eastern United States and the western United States, or mm -hmm. more generally put, uh, settled and long-developed areas versus those not. Another example would be maybe Australia and how things like uh, uh, Queensland and then the outback is just kind of, Sure, lines. Let's let's just go with lines, right? Absolutely correct. And one of the things, since you mentioned east and west of of our country, right? Um, at the uh, uh, state highway in it's in a west a northwestern Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. um, at the at the banks of the Ohio River, leading into the state of Ohio, there is a roadside marker that is is on the Pennsylvania side, and it's a um, in shape and form, it's not unlike the, the international boundary markers between Mexico and the United mm -hmm. States. So it's a little obelisk-shaped uh, marker. Um, trees have, and, and vegetation have overgrown it. It is hard to see. Hmm. But it is the origin point of the survey 
for the Northwest Territories. Oh. So west of that point, on the opposite side of the river, we begin to see the imposition of a grid, okay? Range yeah. and townships and a, a meridian and a, a, or a baseline in which to measure um, 30 miles by 30 miles to have a 900, huh. you know, ni- 900 square miles uh, of territory, 30 by 30. And so it's the basis. That's why you see mm-hmm. all the square formations west and you see all these irregular polygons to the east. So the history of map making has often been interesting and fraught because uh, another finer point to be made is about the fine point drawn on a map because depending on the scale mm-hmm. you're looking at and the you know how zoomed out you are as we put it in modern consideration, mm-hmm. the, the the line you're actually drawing, if that's what we're going with, the drawing of the line could represent you know meters to miles in width depending on how fine that point is. So again, how that then translates to on the ground, particularly as we have had. Again, not immediately, immediately wars fought in our immediate area, which I still think are, I mean, I think we're lucky for, but not over it anyway, but our, has been a result of other conflicts fought in our immediate region. And so then coming out of that, I mean, if doing it wrong, that could lead to another war. 54, 40, or fight. fight. Yep. All right. Whole different ball game, whole different border, but, but point well taken. Mm-hmm. All right. The U.S. says the line is here, and Britain says no, no, no. The line is further to the south. Now, all that up in the Pacific Northwest, mm-hmm. the present states of of Washington and Idaho being impacted. <clears throat> Pardon me. And so, we are willing to go to to go to war over an invisible line on the ground. Yep, 50, that's what that was all about. Fifty four forty or thirty eighth parallel, a little bit more modernly <laughs> there, yep. but uh, <laughs> oftentimes, or. Uh, if you want to go even a bit before that, the whole uh, papal compromise of the uh, settlement of the Americas, which part was Brit, which part was Bra- well, now Brazil, Portuguese, and which part was Spanish. I mean, all of these things right. long impacting here. So the history of that is not, I don't think anyone who has any recent or reasonable study of it could be dissuaded of the fact that, yeah, setting of maps is not just a reflection of history, but is often defined on its own. But particularly for some of the ones, like you've got a couple examples here of the ones that we have seen in our own borderland region. When does this map date from? This map is from, let's see, that is the, uh, um, that particular map is, I'm trying to see it clearly. I want to say uh, 1847, I think is what it says. That is a, uh, I beg your pardon, that is, yes, that is a detail from John Dist- uh, uh, John Distronel's map. Um, what, what this map presents is a dilemma because Distronel was not a cartographer in the least bit. He... Mm-hmm. He had a bookstore, in, 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 and he was an engraver in New York City. Mm-hmm. And so he was, I mean, he was an intelligent man. He was a good businessman, and he liked maps. Uh-huh. And, and he created this map in 1847 of the United Mexican States. Okay? Uh-huh. This map was the basis. It was to be used primarily to convey a general understanding of the, the, the Republic of Mexico and its relation to the, the borderlands. Okay, okay, so, and to put, of course, this in perspective of time-wise here, of course, before the Civil War, so some of those definitions were not in place here. That's but right. But, of course, uh, after 1836 and those events, so we are talking about, again, pretty significant things, Republic of Texas and other aspects in those territories. Exactly, and you'll notice you have the, the, the color-coded uh, aspect, the yellow, the pink, and the green. All right, so you have Texas identified the green portion up in the the northwest corner, if you will, being New Mexico, and pink, uh, or the salmon-colored part, as Estado de Chihuahua. Mm-hmm. And now, now because this map is not in inac- is not accurate in many regards. I mean, yeah, look I- at look at. Big Bend. Big Bend but, is is very oddly shaped in this one, almost. It's not. I, I don't it's not bold and grand. It. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very. Um, um, it almost comes to a point there. Yeah, it's like a double point at the bottom there, as opposed to the kind of meandering curve that it takes in. Precisely. Well, we know it does. It really does not account for the river at all, Be, and for a good reason. 
no one had gone through that portion of of the river itself. And as a finer point here, the gentleman again coming up with this map had never been in this region. He'd never been here. He had not been. I think the furthest west he'd ever been is on the east bank of the or the uh, right bank of the uh, Hudson River. <laughs> that was probably about okay. as far west as he had ever been. And and so yeah. and so this particular map, Distronel's map, was used. It was named specifically in the fifth article of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo that this is the map that the two um, sets of surveyors, one from, from Mexico and one from the United States, would use as the basis to determine the origin point to begin a survey that would stretch mm -hmm. north eight miles north of El Paso del Norte from the cathedral. So that would be the church, Guadalupe, yeah, uh, uh, Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe mm -hmm. Church in in present day Ciudad Juarez. So eight miles north of the of the church, and then immediately uh, due west until because that was thought to be the southern border of the Mexican state of New Mexico. Okay. 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 And so the western border of New Mexico, as defined by Mexico was the Gila River. Okay. Okay. So, eight miles north from the church, due west until you strike a point where you right angle and you intersect with the Gila. And then the Gila River becomes the boundary. Right. All right. So, you kind of make a, a boot hill, in essence, right there. Okay. And then from the Gila, you cross, continue west until you reach a point that is one marine league and we won't see it on this map. This is just mm -hmm. a detail centered on the uh, on um, on uh, Cida, or on uh, El Paso del Norte. Um, mm -hmm. Then you will uh, continue a an invisible line across Tierra Incognito from the Gila River to one Marine League due south of the port of San Diego. Incredibly well. I mean, detailed instructions, but specific maybe. Lacking some thereof, and again, those who can see right. pictures over on our social media as we got it up streaming for you right now, maybe looking at, um, let's just say, some of these maps, and maybe wondering, El Paso is, where the hell is this? Like, I'm seeing uh, the Guadalupe Mountains. I mean, which are misidentified. Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, the further I look at this map, the more confused and mildly upset I get, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to separate that here because... <laughs> It is, I mean, it is, the important is history of what the impact of it here is, is important, but in, in terms of accuracy, boy, was uh, we're not even in the right ballpark anymore here. So, again, as a description of why these things matter, a pretty, a pretty decent approximation. That is right. And, and as it has been described um, uh, by uh, uh, the historian Robert Utley, and he was writing in um, a report for the National Park Service in 1964, and the way he described it was um, many unhappy circumstances could have been avoided between the two countries mm -hmm. if an accurate map had been selected from the beginning. Um, now, both sets of surveyors worked very well together. Mm -hmm. They were professional. Their, their respective governments behaved pretty, pretty badly I um, mean. against one another. Let's just say there were some cross interests that Very were much. at pl at place there. So, Del uh, well said, cross interests. <laughs> yes. And so we got to take that first break of this hour right now. Coming out of this break, we're continue talking again. Guest here in studio, Troy Ainsworth, historic preservation specialist with the city of Las Cruces, talking more about these maps because we've only shown you really one and the progression of maps through history and some of the other topics, including the precision or lack thereof, and the progression hopefully towards more of it and how these things finally got settled, as well as some notes on history historic preservation throughout the course of our show today. We'll definitely be getting to all of that here. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show after this break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. 
Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the Old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the Old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso. 
Welcome back here to the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk, and we are, of course, the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. You can go there for our weekly promo announcements of the topics on the upcoming programs each week. Also, our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, where you can find the El Paso Gold DVDs from Capstone Production covering more than the last 20 years of history documentary production in town, all uploaded for free for your viewing pleasure, plus the 20 recent segments from our ABC7 TV series from El Paso History TV. And also a reminder to support our advertisers, Pepe's Restaurant in Canyon Tio, home of the one and only Margarita and home of the Griggs recipes. Uh, some of the uh, management and people involved with the production of those kept those alive and going over at there at Pepe's. Again, 6761 Donovan Drive, open for in-house dining. Give them a call at 915-877-2152. That's 915-877-2152. And I'll be headed out there after the show and after our airing here today as we are pre-recorded today. But we are again joined here in studio by Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. So, we were going a little bit in depth on one of the maps to talk about today, but of course, one of the, I guess, quote unquote, earliest or most significant of recent-ish history, historically speaking anyway. But there have been, uh, I mean, part of what we're going to be talking about today, besides that map, which we're again putting up on screen here, the one that has the issues. I mean, issues have abounded at many points in time. Again, the, that map we're talking about right there. But then other ones and the progression throughout history, just giving some examples here. I mean, the initial one we have right there is uh, 1847. Then we have an 1853, one of the other kind of boundary reviews. And then for some of the, well, this one uh, also demonstrates some of the issues and disputes that came about this and why That's things right. such as Gadsden and ultimately kind of eventually Chamizal had to happen, but then also some further ones and some other colorful ones and just showing the progression through history of how even just, again, the very landscape we were on was measured and considered here. So as we're looking at these things, people may be noticing different, you know, aspects of them, different, you know, qualities, different quality of how they are produced, but precision was also kind of an important part of them. Absolutely. And precision of making a map by an individual who has never actually been to the location <laughs> is very yeah. difficult. Now, let's put it into, into, into context. Um, uh, the fifth article of the treaty also stipulated that uh, with regard to one marine league south of the southernmost point of the point of the port, I beg your pardon, of San Diego. Right. Now, that shoreline on the southern of the coast of, of Baja, California, Mm -hmm. or um, uh, Alta, California, beg your pardon, was better well known because it was mapped and surveyed in 1782. Okay. Okay, so the second sailing master of the Spanish fleet, Don Juan Pantonia, okay. is his name, 1782. He surveyed on an expedition, he surveyed that part of the, of the California coast. In 1802, his maps were finally published. So that was 20 years later. Yeah. Point being, it was more well known about the actual character, contours, condition, and distances of the port at San Diego, California, than it was at El Paso del Norte in the interior of the continent. Okay. Mm. So when, it, when the international boundary survey begins between the the parties between the two nations it's more there's more knowledge accurate knowledge on the pacific coast than there is along the banks of the rio bravo del norte i mean easy to or easier to go by ship along a coastline than i guess it is to uh, schlep all the way out to a otherwise kind of random spot in the interior from that point in time particularly for those from new york and such very much so and and so the interior of the continent was less well known. Of course, everyone who's listening, I'm sure, is familiar with all the Spanish entradas earlier. Oh, sure. But the summation of all that knowledge and information was was it it too was wildly inaccurate. <laughs> and so that brings us to the big problems of what the International Boundary Commission w was tasked with, and and how they had to resolve and. Uh, uh, how, how they had to resolve all of these issues working mm -hmm. on faulty information. 
and the precision and the ways they went about it. Again, defines our area, but we'll have to get more into that already due for that next break of this hour coming out of this break. Getting into that, but again, still joined here in studio by Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. Back after this break with more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549, 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in what is Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the only... Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. I have to tell you about some of our great other partners in history and, uh, well, opportunities to get out in it. Of course, Celebration of Our Mountains. Find them online at celebrationofourmountains.org or just search it up on your favorite social media or on your favorite search engine and you'll find it there. They have events such as what they had going on, well, a little bit about during this time of the morning here, the visit to the Border Patrol Museum. But if you want to get to some of their other ones going on and ahead, they've got on August 13th, the Playa Drain Trail Bike Ride with Live Active El Paso, as well as something else we'll be talking about on this program in coming weeks, the Secret Society of John Wesley Hardin and those meetings along with a whole lot more, such as exploring Keystone Heritage Park. Find a full list of their events, activities, and how you can get out and about and enjoy parts of our natural landscape 
and more with Celebration of Our Mountains. Again, celebrationofourmountains.org. And of course, I have to remind you about our friends at Monterey Asset Management. They're no longer called that. They've changed their names to M1EP Management Corporation to better represent the services that they can bring to you. Their website, m1ep.com. That's m numeral one ep.com. Go to them for many different opportunities to get out of the rat race and get out of the stock market roller coaster and invest directly in property and their multifamily property management. Again, m1ep.com. That's m numeral one ep.com. Or find them, of course, at on their phone line, 915-592-4549. That's 915-592-4549. And also, just as an event going on, well, right about now, and also has been going on the Plaza Classic Film Festival going on through this weekend with a lot of events coming up today. One of their big ones, the Grand Budapest Hotel with special guests live and talking about before of it, of course, the uh, Grand Budapest Hotel with F. Murray Abraham, also, of course, sponsored by other uh, friends of the show here, Mary Jo Melby and the Sunset Film Society. We talked with them about that a little bit previous and earlier in the year. You can go back and catch that on our archive, on our pages here. But joining us, of course, in studio right now, we are still joined by Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces and former Historic Preservation Officer for the City of El Paso. So we're talking about maps and the impact that they have, how they're even drawn or come about. So we were talking a little bit previous in the previous segment about uh, this particular map and how... Well, to even the casual, anyone who's lived in this area, listening to this broadcast, and has even casually glanced at a Google map in their mm-hmm. life here may recognize the many, 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 many issues. <laughs> with, again, the closer mm-hmm. I look, the angrier I get, so I might have to might have to not look at it yeah, we too can, we much can, harder. We can go on to, a, to another one. Because that one, the fact that it was made from a guy, New York City, yes. it just... Uh, it, it Anathema. Just, it, it, it heightens it for me. So uh, that map and all the issues that came with it are important here. But then we have another one, this one from 1853, because at this point we start talking about, like you said, uh, boundary surveys, boundary markers. And this one is uh, significant in a number of ways. A, people may be slightly better to recognize the path of the Rio Grande north of El Paso. So it looks similar Very similar, yes. And this uh, this is sheet number two for this particular region of the International Survey. Mm. So what we're looking at here is actual collaborative work between the the two surveying mm. commissions, one from Mexico, one from the United States, and um, uh, precise measurements primarily by the Mexican surveyors per, prefer to use a triangulation mm-hmm. method uh, to define a specific point and distance on the ground. Mm-hmm. The, the uh, American uh, surveyors prefer to take measurements by astronomical readings interesting okay. okay so so the what was interesting about the survey is that both commissions had uh, brought with them very sophisticated measuring measuring tools and equipment for the day I would say for the day here for because day. no it was not GPS but I mean, survey equipment had long been, I mean, I remember learning back in the day about how that was uh, one of George Washington's professions here. Yes. And using certain measurements and then perspectives, distances. I mean, this was established technology. That's right. And and um, initially, one of the surveyors for the United States Commission was a man named Andrew Belcher Gray. And I believe Belcher is not is not an insulting or it's not a description of any okay. personal habit. I fair think enough. fair enough. Um, aptitude for engineering, science, mathematics as a child, and he actually was um, in 1838, 1839. He worked with a gentleman named Andrew Talcott, who was a um, I believe he was Scottish. He was okay. he was a mathematician, and he had devised a method of of, of basically measuring distances and defining latitude and longitude. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he was he was rather erudite in this manner. So Andrew Gray worked with him when he was an ensign in the fledgling Navy of the Republic of Texas. Oh wow! Okay, Gray had a very um, heady responsibility in 1840, 1841 to be the surveyor for the international survey between the Republic of Texas and the United States. So that okay. is the Louisiana Texas border right okay so at that border off of Texas Highway 31 
uh, southeast of Deadwood, Texas, mm -hmm. about 100 yards north of where that road crosses into Louisiana, is a is a marker. Um, it's a, a square shaped marker that on one side is embossed in in a large in large letters R T Republic of Texas, right, and on the opposite side U S. There you go, and it's one of the last remaining markers on that border. Right. So yeah. his next major project was up in the in the Great Lakes area, and then he he is uh, assigned to where we are right now mm -hmm. for the International Survey, and and um, the gentlemen who were on both commissions, despite what their respective governments were how they were behaving and what they were saying mm -hmm. to each other were actually very cordial, professional, collegial, and they understood they were sharing in the toils and the hardship of, of problem solving in this terrain. Mm -hmm. okay? And coming up with, again, this map here. Right. And so, again, it's appreciable how... Again, and it's, it's much more accurate. It's and you can see... Day and night over the previous map. Let's just, again, compare here just real quick for yeah. my edification and mild infuriment because that one to this one again night and day is is almost too generous here and you see you see north of el paso you see the location identified as frontera mm -hmm. okay we have right over here off of donovan um is frontera which runs east and west the street named oh. frontera yeah in that general vicinity was the actual location of that little place on the map right there, Frontera. What makes Frontera interesting, evidence is gone, modernity has wiped it away, you know, roads have been built, sure. uh, houses have been built, but the location of where Frontera was, and Frontera appears on maps from, from the end of the war until well into the 1860s, it was a location where a crude hut was built to house the instruments to look up into the night sky, to measure, to take uh, readings by the stars. Wow. That's what Frontera was. It is a very important point on the international boundary, and it has been been lost irrevocably because wow. the irony is the idea was to measure distances and, and to prepare an accurate map and prepare mm -hmm. an accurate point on the ground. We can't identify the place where Frontier is, unfortunately. Uh, things do get lost to time, unfortunately, yes. here. But so their ability to do that, and that difference is, was there any, and it's notable also on this map that you can see some of those um, latitude and longitude lines there, yes. both boxing it out, and of course at the top and the bottom there where they're actually noted both, uh, I think we're looking at the 32 and then 31, uh, Parallels. 31 and 30 yep. actual lines mm -hmm. there is, so I mean the precision already up, uh, very much here and again that part of the conversation as it kind of weaves through all of these topics here because i mean even just the different methods that they were potentially using here i mean you're using different tools different measurements i mean even right. just different rulers can have impacts on how you're actually and the precision therein because once you start looking at particularly you know natural barriers like the river and particularly the northern part of it it becomes the more precise you get the more complicated it gets that's right and um to a point in the first segment about a natural feature is a is usually a pretty good idea as a as a demarcation between mm -hmm. international or or for an international boundary. Mountains work well, yeah, okay, but rivers do not. European rivers tended to, which is why in our kind of succession European society, rivers, yes, they didn't move a whole lot. But um, the Rio Grande is not a European river. No, and it it. And it's very visible in the in the 1853 sheet right here because you can see uh, identified the old and the new riverbed, and of course where the Chamizal is located, mm -hmm. uh, which created a whole different set of problems between uh, the two countries. Uh, well into 1964. I mean, the Kennedy administration and right. the follow-on, you know, Johnson. Because, I mean, yeah, the way it looks on here, you go south or southeast of the what's known as Franklin on the map, uh, mm -hmm. opposite El Paso del Norte. And it almost looks like this uh, delta area, this, mm -hmm. this, this, this cobweb of 
rivers or little streams it looks like on the map here because there was the old and the new because the movement of a river is never just well it's going that way today it's complicated as it was guys, and, and coming out of flooding and anyone who might know of course there's one of the stories of what's uh, noted there Isleta, Socorro, San Lazario is that occasionally some of these missions had to be or Presidio chapels or Presidios had to be moved adjusted because they got flooded yeah. and they these things would happen so uh, then trying to figure out okay so which one of these channels parts of it issues is is the real one is I mean that's was uh, up until this uh, past century an issue. That's right, because at what point in time, where is the river at a point in time? And so when you're, when you're thinking about uh, the Texas-New Mexico line approaching the river from the east, mm-hmm. okay, and then you have the river flowing south, and then the Texas, uh, the international border picks up, right? Right. So you have that area uh, at Anapra, for example, Mm -hmm. okay, where you have a point where all three converge, Chihuahua, New Mexico, and Texas, all right, but it's at at that one point, and then you have the riverbed itself, and then it's just Texas and New Mexico, right? okay? Now, um, Supreme Court has had to step in (laughs) on an an occasion. More recently than not, yeah. That's right. To define what, what land belongs to New Mexico, what land belongs to Texas, we have to make a determination. What year are we looking at, and where was the river in that year, based on the best available information? So cartography is extremely, extremely important because when you are using a map such as John Distronell's map as a basis for an international boundary, Mm -hmm. uh, an article in an international treaty of peace, and the map is incorrect, you have a big problem for both commissions, okay? Absolutely, and it's even continued in modern day. There was, I want to say it was uh, Costa Rica and Nicaragua right. almost had an armed conflict in more recent days because Google Maps showed a strip of land as being within one country in which it was not, but you might think of a simple programming error, but the fact that then uh, armies were getting involved, or at least armed forces started to, you start to see the importance right. of and, this. And when tempers begin to, to rise you? on an international level, uh, sometimes it's hard to pull back from from a conflict that's later described as inevitable. And and clearly that's yeah. not all war is inevitable. This is a this is a squabble. Yeah. This is not a justifiable war. Bad intel, bad information leading to conflict is uh, rarely reviewed as a good thing in the long run here. But right. again, that's Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces, talking more about some of these significant maps showing uh, errors of the measuring of the borderland and what they signify for the in, well, landscape we still inhabit today. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show after this break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 
Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Thank you all so very much for joining us for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. Some of our great other partners in history, including Rick Kearns, Music Podcast, Talk and Rock Radio, always coming out with great content there, including some reunions and some of the projects Rick has been involved in himself over the years. You may, of course, remember the Border Legends Tour and the many great concerts and performances they had there, and remembering a lot of the music history, both those bands coming out of here, indigenously produced, going on to big and better things. Things, a lot of that remembrances and big events talked about there. Again, find them online at talkandrockradio.com. That's talk and rockradio.com. And of course, call 915 588 1850 for Patrick Total Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate. Patrick and his team have done some great work for me and my family and is an excellent realtor to go to for El Paso homes for sale or rent. Got me into the current house we're currently working on moving into. So again, call him 915-588-1850 and some other great programs he's got available there. But again, joined here in studio by Troy Ainsworth, historic preservation specialist with the city of Las Cruces, talking about some of the vanity and myriad maps that show the progression of Once we got, again, primarily through the Republic of Texas era and started getting into the U.S. era, possession of of this territory here, those questions about how to actually measure it continued on for quite a long time, including, too, uh, some of the early maps of actually surveying what those boundaries should be and trying to lay out the issues that have then cropped up, such as uh, this one uh, uh, cataloging from 1848 to 1853, showing that uh, whatever you see something disputed tracked on a map <laughs> like you see there, you might think, oh, that's probably not good. Probably not good indeed. And and as you can see, you have two different um, points of origin right. um, that are predicated upon the language of Article 5 of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo and the actual depiction of this this area on John Disternell's 1847 map, which, again, as we've been discussing, was, was inaccurate. And so, um, in essence, what is conveyed here is the uh, initial problem of where is the, the where is point zero mm-hmm. in order to begin a at a point north of El Paso del Norte and as you can see, in in the southern, the more southern of the two lines, it is closer to El Paso del Norte. So with that line being further south, the United States would have gained more territory for, uh, into uh, of the Mexican province, the state of of what is New Mexico. Mm-hmm. But the northernmost line, which is up near Doña Ana, 
um, which is, of course, north of Las Cruces. Yep, north of what's known on the map as Mesilla there already. Mesilla, yeah, and you really don't have Las Cruces yet, of course. Right. I mean, this is, um, that's 1849 for settlement and uh, for that uh, settlement. So the, the, uh, the Mexican surveyors, of course, wanted that line to be as far north as possible. The Americans wanted it to be as far south as possible. Of course. Which led to a major dispute, not between the two nations, but between or between the two commissions, uh, the two nations, yes. But the American yeah. Commission broke down in its entirety. Bartlett uh, compromised with his counterpart, Conde, in, in the Mexican Commission to move the line, the origin point, all the way near Doñana. And just to give an, the best way I can describe this as what this would have looked like, if you know where the Gila River is, essentially it would have been, I mean, we talk about the boot heel of New Mexico now, this would have been almost an inverse boot heel. The That's boot right. heel would have been uh, essentially north of El Paso. That's right. That is absolutely correct. And the surveyor who contested everything that Commissioner Bartlett had to say was none other than Andrew Belcher Gray. And <laughs> so he was, he was there. Now, he lost his job. He was recalled. But his argument ultimately carried the day. And so war was averted. A war was almost declared between the two countries. The rhetoric in the print in Mm -hmm. newspapers in both countries heated up pretty significantly. And uh, fortunately, a second treaty was was, uh, established and signed. And that's when they established the point of origin Mm -hmm. of where it actually is right to this very day. And extends west, eight miles north of the church at El Paso del Norte. And so the significance of that, of course, defining how and where we get to things like, uh, you know, monument number one, mile marker one, those things. We'll get into more of that here in this next hour of the show. Again, Troy Ainsworth, historic preservation specialist with the city of Las Cruces, joining us here in studio. But back with more on the El Paso History Radio Show in hour two of the program, right here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Stay tuned. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. 
Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. 
Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. 
Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso Film. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. A lot of stuff we're talking about here today, including uh, still joined here by Troy Ainsworth uh, with the, of course, a historic preservation specialist with the city of Las Cruces. But starting on hour two of the program with the El Paso History Radio Show with a history moment from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk talking about this week on El Paso architect Mabel Welch. Mabel Claire Welch was El Paso's first certified female architect and is credited with reintroducing Spanish-style architecture in El Paso. Her designs featured red clay tile roofs, wrought iron grills, balconies, and white stucco exteriors, all characteristic of Spanish-influenced architecture. In the 1920s, Mabel began working with her husband Malcolm in his home construction business. Malcolm would build a house, Mabel would decorate its interior, and they would live in the house until a buyer was found. For four years, Malcolm and Mabel built and decorated houses in East El Paso, the Highland Park Edition, and the Lower Valley. When Malcolm's health deteriorated in 1924, Mabel assumed additional responsibilities. Malcolm advised his wife on construction techniques, crew management, and financing. She finished building a home her husband had begun, then took on the design and construction of his other projects, and continued to work on her own after his death in 1927. Much of Mabel's work centered on Wheeling Avenue in Highland Park, where she built nine homes in the 3100 block and a total of 15 along the street. She built her own family's home at 3131 Wheeling. According to Mabel's son Elvin, she designed and built as many as 1500 homes, with the majority of them in El Paso. Mabel Welch's career lasted through the early 1950s. There is an historic marker to her in Memorial Park. I'm Jackson Polk with this History Moment for the El Paso History Radio Show. Also mention of some of our other great partners in promoting local history. Of course, the, and a great history, work done by Barbara Given Bainey, the operator of the Facebook page group, Remember in El Paso When. Go there for archive pictures galore with more than 33,000 members. It's no mean feat that they do to keep it on track and focus, again, on our history and the research they do. But please remember, these administrators have worked hard in researching for photos with our history attached. When you use their photos, they ask that you please give credit to their site. So, of course, we have Chief Admin Owner and Historian Barbara Given Bainey, affectionately known as BGB. Also, Admins Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, ben, and moderators Ben Vincent and Al Lowe. Appreciate them and all the work they do. And again, we are streaming live on their page here today in this pre-recorded episode. And joined again here back in studio by Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces and former Historic Preservation Officer with the City of El Paso, talking about, well, some of those maps that we would be able to find those properties that were just discussed <laughs> on here. And including, we're talking right before the break and the uh, top of the hour there about this map prepared by, in the modern sense, by the uh, National Park Service, but documenting some of the disputes and issues between 1848 and 1853, between essentially the start of the setting of some of these boundaries after the wars and conflicts that preceded them, and then the Gadsden Purchase here. So, again, anytime you see disputed tract, usually probably a, a sense that something is not going well and could have ended up in a war, of course, but thankfully didn't in this case. And so we got a couple different lines there that we're looking at. And again, uh, just as we're talking about the progression of the maps and how they look at a very, very very different version than that again uh, first one that had been well like you said literally a part of the treaty and was uh, designated as uh, what the what was supposed to establish the lines but you'd be hard pressed to recognize that as just about anything unless you were explicitly told exactly these days. yeah that's right and and so as we as we uh, saw a little bit ago in a previous segment 
the the fact that within a very short period of time, 1847, and then again in 1853, you see a very inaccurate depiction of the borderland, and then you see a a, a surveyed and measured mm-hmm. depiction of the very same land, and you have greater accuracy in the location and the general direction and bends that are within the 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 river itself mm-hmm. and and place names um and their proper locations right. in in relation to one another are depicted and so again as you pointed out the fact that the the changing of the riverbed in right. that in that Isleta and Socorro and San Elizario are in this area in uh, that are that's greatly impacted by the shifting of the riverbed. Mm-hmm. Um, so at one point in time, on the right bank of the river, therefore in Mexico, and later on the left bank, or excuse me, uh, let me get that straight: left bank, Mexico; right bank, U.S. Of course, yes. And and so, um, you know, it, it, it's it's not dissimilar to what Mark Twain observed about <laughs> the farmer uh, in up in uh, that area, right. Of, across the Mississippi that right. separates that point, uh, a point from Arkansas and Tennessee. He, right. can, he can go to bed, a farmer in Tennessee, and it can rain a lot that night, and he can wake up as a farmer in Arkansas. You know? and, and some of those modern peculiarities mm-hmm. that still exist there, because there's that, I can't remember which state it is now, Fan, that, that you bring it up, but there's one disconnected part of the state because it was and is a surrounded by an oxbow bend still here. So That's again, right. Again, yeah. the, the, the United States rivers never played by the rules that European considered or influenced uh, line setters and boundary markers would consider. Never played nice by those rules here, and this just further demonstrates it here. And so the, the moving towards getting it more right, and again, the setting of these lines. So this dispute, as yeah. it came about, that eventually resolved with the Gadsden purchase and the factors that went into it, I mean, it, again, could have come to blows and very nearly did. And uh, yeah, for all we know, could have between uh, some of these surveyors that you mentioned and the disagreements they had. That's right, because the government of Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana um, was very bellicose. Oh, absolutely. Okay. But um, that bellicosity was tampered down by more moderate voices within the government in Mexico. But but um, uh, Santa Ana was prepared to renew a war. Mm-hmm. You know, he was, after all, self-proclaimed Napoleon of the West. Self-proclaimed yep. being important. And... and um, uh, war fever was strong in the District of Columbia as well, mm-hmm. and and yet, as we've discussed, it was not the case among the two international parties mm-hmm. actually conducting the survey, actually doing the on the ground actual work, the scientific work, and and so um, very miraculously, in many mm-hmm. ways, they were able to work together. Uh, suspend any of the any of the uh, difficulties going on between the respective governments and actually do their jobs is what it boils down to and they disregarded Mm -hmm. all of the political intrigue all of the political dimensions and focused on actual measurements (laughs) map making surveying and by and large one of the testaments to the quality of the work that they have done um, our contemporary ability to make measurements, graphic information systems (GIS). Oh yeah, mm. finds very minimal, if any, inaccuracies in any of their measurements. Well, which, that's pretty amazing. Which is pretty miraculous because one of the kind of things that, as we we're talking about, all of the you know graduation and variation and evolution between these different sets of maps we've been going through even so far, and even some of the ones, of course, to come here, more historically based as well, is the fact that precision was often a little bit fleeting. Because, sure, more techniques may have come across, but 
uh, as in, you know, such as in the example of this map, the different, uh, of course, boundary lines, considerations. You see, Stark kind of particularly in this one from uh, 1859, the difference and the kind of evolution. And you see where the settlement, where some of the county lines and such being set, and then the very straight lines that start defining parts of the American West as it has. Some of the legacy systems they're having to deal with, particularly in some of those eastern areas, were not even consistent because we're dealing with different imperial systems, whether it be Spanish, whether it be French, whether it be British, mm -hmm. and the successor systems to that. I mean, none of those were necessarily, let's just say, the meter was a revolutionary concept in being scientifically based because a lot of the previous ones super weren't. That, that's right. And, and uh, it is to uh, Benjamin Franklin's credit. He was very much, he saw the value of the metric system, mm -hmm. okay? And, of course, the metric system is born out of the Age of Enlightenment. Mm -hmm. So Franklin and Thomas Jefferson and John Adams in particular are, are products of the intellectual uh, coming of age of philosophy and science and at the Age of Enlightenment. So this is where we have both, both the political, um, civil liberty mm -hmm. um, understanding of the rights of man, okay. So this is where you see an English, and later a you an American, of course, constitution, okay. But in science and mathematics, a, a very precise uh, system of measurement. This appeals to Benjamin Franklin's mm -hmm. scientific mind, as well as the whole Academy of French mathematicians, because a meter, no matter where you measure it, where you lay it out, is an identical length. A foot. Or a furlough, or a vara, or a cubit, or yeah. <laughs> a, or a hand. I mean, yeah, the all span. Of the, all of these are arbitrary, and they're based on the on individual human dimension. Anatomical relations. Yes. Anytime you're, you're hearing that in one of these things, you might be thinking, okay, but but whose hand? Whose foot? Uh, whose you know furlough? Whose yeah. bit of rope? Like all of these things are complicated. <laughs> well, even uh, a, a, a local example. When Lieutenant Sackett was laying out surveying in, in a crude but, you know, a typical surveying manner for what becomes uh, Las Cruces, mm. it was a leather uh, rawhide quirt that he was using, as, not metal chain, but it was made of leather. Uh, and oh, so no. I can see a problem yeah, there Yeah, so if the leather became wet, if it uh, was out in the rain, uh, uh, then it would not stretch as far as, if it, as when it was dry. So the if you think about in a college or professional football game, the the ten yard markers, the chains, yep. the chains are identical, and that's because that's a metal chain and not a leather chain. Okay, <laughs> and therefore, mm -hmm. um, if on one day a dry day and you can stretch it out in the equivalent of ten yards, but overnight it rained and it soaked up a lot of water and you stretch it out the next day, and it, but it's really only eight, but we'll call it ten. You can see how this leads to, just on a microcosm, yeah. it leads to a problem of laying out streets, the, for example. The amount of bets that would be lost, among other things, on any given Sunday Absolutely. Yeah, would, would be an issue. Uh, would be an and issue. The fights that could come from there, much less actual boundary setting here. So that's part of why it's kind of pretty amazing that there's any accuracy to be found in these systems because if again mm -hmm. even just coming out of those i mean you're talking about one nautical league south yeah. of of san diego and the port there i mean the the amount the, the questions that come to mind okay what point of the port are we talking about right. which aspect of it is the southernmost building is it where the water stops and what's a league how do you measure that those kind of questions mm -hmm. abound so it's again mildly miraculous that these questions were ever answered that, that is correct and and one of the great things about the adoption of a uniform measuring system is is um, when Franklin really became enamored with the the entire notion of unified mm -hmm. uniform measurements. Um, he really really stressed the adoption of that system. We have remained with the English system since the 17th century. Yeah, um, much to Mr. Franklin's dismay, okay? And again, if we had adopted it, my theory, we would have happily avoided a lot of problems with cartography, with 54-40 or fight, yeah. with measurements of, of difficult terrain in the American West, for example. Hmm. So the implications are real world. And and it's not just a... a um, um, an imaginative method of measurement. It's the actual 
translation of that length of measurement on the ground itself. Exactly. And the way the formulations happen and the fact that part of the reason the adoption didn't happen besides stubbornness was literally pirates is a whole another story to be got. That after. is exactly correct. <laughs> yes. It's a whole well, but, it's a whole other story here. That's for maybe another show. Maybe here. another show, yes. <laughs> yes. Again, joining us here in studio, that is Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. We'll be talking more about those maps and the ones that, and what they mean here for our area after this break with more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano, and see their website at missiondelray.com, 915-440-2140, for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see... Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. Uh, i got to tell you about what we got coming up for you next week on the program there. We are going to be talking about the John Wesley Hardin Secret Society. See, sometimes I give good illusions for what's coming up next. And, of course, the events coming up with them. Going to be talking with Patricia Kidney and, of course, the Concordia Heritage Association and all of the groups involved with that. So, again, John Wesley Hardin Secret Society next week on the program here. And of course, another sponsor to remind you about of the Mission Del Rey Southwest and their great selection of Southwest goods, decor, gifts, and I mean, home apparel, a lot of things, a literal uh, flavors of the Southwest. If you talk about the products, consumables that they do have there, candy, gifts. I mean, if you've never wandered through there, it's a good place to uh, spend an afternoon and find way more stuff than you could ever possibly need, but might fit perfectly in your house there, including I've always been surprised that some of the selection they've got, they've got this great set of actually patio furniture right now cast aluminum but uh, bronze and looking beautiful without uh, just about any decor you've got but without being heavy and worry about crushing your foot like you would with cast iron so find them there again their 12,000 square foot showroom on Lee Trevino and the end of the intersection with Pelicano mention the El Paso History Radio Show for a discount give them a call at 915-440-2140 915-440-2140 or again find them online at Mission Del Rey Dot com. Again, joined here in studio by Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. So, 
We've been talking a lot about the development of these maps, the conflicts that have come with them, but also the way that they've continued to develop from there. And so we were showing the up-close version of uh, some of those boundary and conflict lines that eventually got settled by the southernmost line there, the Gadsden Purchase, settling of that there. But then the whole boundary as it then was established, I mean, this was essentially in place by then 1853. Exactly. And with with uh, final modifications mm -hmm. and... And, of course, the exchange of, of completed maps, uh, segment by segment, all these sheets. Mm -hmm. It's 1857. All the international boundary markers are in place from El Paso del Norte to San Diego. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the great ironies is going into the survey, uh, the river itself, all the way from, the, it's, uh, from El Paso del Norte all the way down to its downstream mouth at Boca Chica at the, oh, yeah. the Gulf, was considered the more reliable portion of the international border because a river is a river. It's always right there was the Sh thinking. Sure. sure. <laughs> but the part from El Paso del Norte to San Diego is, in essence, an invisible line across the Chihuahuan Desert and the Sonoran Desert floors all the way out to the Pacific Coast. The yeah. irony is the invisible line between El Paso del Norte and San Diego is the more reliable portion of the border after the Gadsden Purchase. It is invisible, granted. It is marked with obelisk at a regular interval. Right. All right? But it doesn't change. The river does. And, yep. Yep. and mm -hmm. one presidential administration after presidential administration in, in the United States and in Mexico have been uh, beleaguered with the problem of where is the border? Where yep. is it? Because the river is, it, it, it is a movable object. And as much as some of the language of the treaty is such as the deepest channel of the most, uh, the, you know, the, the deepest the, channel, the, the middle point. point of the deepest channel of the river. Sure, that may sound perfectly reasonable, but what if that channel changes? And that's why we end up with things like Chami's all Chami's the crisis all. there. That's exactly because the language of the treaty uh, specifically um, uh, stipulates middle from the deepest channel if there are multiple channels. Okay, well, now you, you have two, maybe three channels, as you would at the downstream mouth entering the Gulf. Yeah, again. Like, that, like the Mississippi below New Orleans. Yeah, like I said, like that's why I almost refer to it as a delta because it starts spanning out like that in this previous map, the one from a, uh, 1853 here. But I will say I appreciate the accuracy from a map such as, again, this one that was the full international boundary coming out, 1857, you mentioned, and again, that, oh, that previous one, yes, that yes. first one yes. in this uh, treaty history. That's right. Oh, boy. But then as a more contemporary map, we also have this 1859 one showing and there may be some parts that are not exactly recognizable, such as the whole much wider New Mexico territory That's you're right. mentioning there. And, uh, I mean, Texas, sure, more or less. But uh, that southern boundary, that uh, green and uh, Christmas line, essentially green and red there, there you go. is in immediately recognizable. That's right. And and so here we have um, here we have something very interesting. And um, um, in fact, we might we might have to come back to this one uh, to speak a little bit more in depth uh, oh, as, yeah. a, as a carryover because you know what I was about to start, but uh, but I I don't want to do a story a disservice. We'll exactly, because way. we do have to take that next break right now. Right. Again, that is Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. And we'll be talking more about these maps, their impact, and what they mean for us going forward, even till today. After this break, here with more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano, and see their website at missiondelray.com, 915-440-2140, for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. 
Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano. And Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. This week only in El Paso, Inc., catch up with the former conductor of the El Paso Symphony Orchestra, who is still deeply immersed in the music world. Electric vehicles are on the rise in Texas, and El Paso Electric CEO Kelly Tomlin is no stranger to the cars. And the former CEO of the El Paso YWCA has a new job, but is staying in the borderland. El Paso's business journal, El Paso, Inc., is available for home or business delivery and online at elpasoinc.com. And, of course, one of the other events that we have to mention that is going to be going on coming up early next month, we are going to be having the Binational History Conference, the conference that unites us, put on by the Cultural Heritage Society of the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro. You can find out information about that and what's going to be happening there at culturalheritagesociety.com, planned for September 8th through the 11th, happening across many different areas, including, well, physical space and cyberspace, if that's a phrase we still use. Ciudad Juarez, day one. Day 2 and 3 in Socorro, Texas, and Day 4 with virtual programming fo focusing on topics such as the binational heritage tourism of the area, tribes of the Camino Real, Camino Real connections, world heritage, gastronomy of the Camino Real, and culture of the area, and how that still unites us and the history that unites us to today. So again, culturalheritagesociety.com to find out that information here. So joining us here in studio again still, we do have Troy Ainsworth, historic preservation specialist with the city of Las Cruces and former 
Historic Preservation Officer for the City of El Paso, many involved in the historic aspects of our region here. So we've been talking about one of the more often referenced ways, I guess you could say, of how history has changed. Maps are persuasive tools in a lot of ways for people to look at, such as I've spent way too many times looking at videos about how territory has changed and mm-hmm. spans of influence across world history. And that kind of in this microcosm, I and mean, we were talking about some specific maps that span from, well, technically to the modern day, but also from 1847 are some of the mm-hmm. ones we popped up here, including, of course, uh, ones uh, such as this showing more of the span and how it's gone through here. So, I mean, look at the difference between that and now, and that's kind of what I'm getting at here. So some of these maps, some of these points here, and how we've gotten there are important here. So we were talking a little bit before the break about this one being a, well, significant in a variety of ways, including, of course, having the very well-defined, at this point, Mm -hmm. southern border. But uh, some of those those northern and interstate boundaries, Texas is pretty well set, but and Oklahoma for the same point. But the fact that Kansas is more or less north of El Paso on it this map. <laughs> it, it is. Separated by a lot of distance. But, sure. But this map from 1859, um, one of the delights that, that maps can provide, mm-hmm. if you really look at them, are, are the, uh, the little hidden stories that mm-hmm. are, are present. Now, in 1859, um, for any, anyone who's looking at this image there on your screen at this moment, um, you can see over on the far left side, you can see the boundary of the of Southern California in relation to Arizona. Nothing's labeled Arizona, of right. course, but you see the uh, you know the Gadsden Purchase has been has been uh, um, finalized, of course, six years earlier, and you can see the rough outline of the territory of New Mexico and how it pushes into. Uh, it shares a boundary with Colorado, and the uh, pointed area you all recognize that's that is Nevada, present mm-hmm. state of Nevada, and the yellow uh, uh, area above that pointed tip right there is identified as Utah. On the very like northern edge of the map on the screen we're looking at. There. Right. All right. So that's Utah. There's no Colorado to be found in this map. Right. And the irony is Colorado will be a state. Uh, quite recent after this map was made, mm-hmm. making this map moot. But what is very interesting, you have Kansas and Utah uh, abutting, sharing, each, other, abutting yeah. each other, and on their southern boundaries, their respective southern boundaries, is the territory of New Mexico. So point being here, upon close observation, ladies and gentlemen, what you will note is that in the territory of Kansas, the highest point is out on the far western part of the territory, and it is named after the explorer. You know him, Mr. Zebulon Pike. Pike. Better, mm-hmm. We'll give him his rank, Lieutenant Zebulon Pike. So Pike's Peak was at one point, one glorious moment in the history of Kansas, the highest point in Kansas. So for anyone who says Kansas is flat and there's nothing there, au contraire, in 1859, Pikes Peak was part was within the boundaries. Should have should have known them when essentially. You should have known them when, indeed, <laughs> indeed. And so within within um, uh, one other thing to note here in the territory of New Mexico, about at the midpoint, you can see the green area, the dominant swath of green, mm-hmm. and then in in what is present day. So southeast New Mexico, it's kind of the salmon colored, and then you see the right. the Gadsden Purchase uh, portion over there in the uh, in the opposite corner. Uh, initially, the thinking was for the territories of Arizona and New Mexico that they would be somehow divided along a north uh, or along an east west axis. Okay. Oh no! So that so, like one part would have been on the north and the other part on the south. Right. So basically, you'd have two roughly rectangular blocks on top of one another. Okay. Two very long states. Right. Very long. and Well, Doniana County, for example, once uh, stretched from the right angle between New Mexico and Texas, mm-hmm. okay, um, all the way to the Colorado River. Oh, wow. Okay. So okay. it was a long, and so all the counties of New Mexico, of the territory, were along a, a um, east-west corridor. And so consider this, Mesilla county seat from 1852 to 1883 for mm-hmm. Doniana County 
Messiah was not midway, was not a midway point. It was, of course, more to the east of the county, and the sheriff, of course, was responsible for maintaining the peace oh, of the entire county. Right, that part. So think about, I mean, Doniana, present day Doniana County is large. Um, if El Paso County had maintained its original boundaries, mm-hmm. it begins uh, basically in the, uh, um, it's, it's basically half of the area. It was Presidio County and El Paso County. Mm-hmm. So basically from the Pecos River to its downstream point with the, with the Rio Grande, and then, of course, back up to El Paso and the invisible line of the boundary between yeah. Texas and New Mexico. So kind of that green line on here, which would be, oh, let's just call that <clears throat> roughly halfway to Big Bend? Yes. Or the, yeah. the bend in the, Big Bend? That's right. That is absolutely correct. So, whoa. yeah, that would, that, <clears throat> yeah, imagine having to ride that in a day or that, whatever the whole old, uh, old uh, tale about how, why counties were established the size they were was. Yes, exactly, because... Um, the itinerant ministers and the sheriffs were very important. <laughs> How much territory and terrain can mm-hmm. you cover? And um, and what is interesting is that you know when you start to look at these at these um, depictions, these are political boundaries. Yeah. And so if you if you'll bring that map back up for a moment, the emphasis had been on an east west uh, division between the two territories of Arizona and New Mexico. Mm-hmm. It's Lincoln's administration that divides it along a north-south line hmm. and separates it because the people in the western part of the territory of New Mexico that became, uh, in popular parlance, Arizona, during the early stages of the war, they were more pro-union hmm. and wanted to be away from the uh, secessionist sentiment that was in Messia, and hmm. so a line was drawn, was turned 90 degrees, and wow. and so it accounts for the the uh, uh, the straight line separating the north south straight line that separates New Mexico and Arizona as we know it today. Here. Yeah, a couple of the so maps it was a we, political. It was a political decision. I mean, as they often are here, a couple of the yeah. maps we want to mention here because, of course, yeah. we've got some uh, you yeah. know, coming out then in uh, eighteen. This is an eighteen sixty map mm. of the territory, uh, the Confederate territory of mm. Arizona it is the basis for this map that uh, Lieutenant Colonel Baylor, John Baylor, uh, established at Messiah. Um, uh, Robert Kelly is the is the cartographer for this map, and this is just a detail, of course, of the the map itself is much more extensive. And of and, course, and again, this is from 1860. Kelly was the editor of the Messiah Times, um, uh, a newspaper that uh, Colonel Baylor actually um, took exception to some of the things that editor Kelly wrote in his newspaper, hmm. and confronted him one night on one of the streets in Messia. And exchanged words with him, and then shot him in cold blood. And then um, exchanged fire. Yeah. And exchanged, and Kelly was unarmed by oh. all accounts of the story. Um, so murdered him in cold blood right there on the streets of Mesilla, New Mexico, and or um, the the murder. There was he was never charged, mm-hmm. and that's how he handled a critic, at least. That's what quite way draconian. To do it. Yeah. Yes, quite draconian. But um, Robert Kelly's map was quite accurate, and it was very detailed. And we're just looking at a small portion I here, mean, of course. Yeah, it is fair. I mean, the the things, and uh, even noting the uh, overland uh, mail trail yes, there, and it, so it's which is very important. Okay, because that that is not Butterfield that that's leading south down towards the lower El Paso Valley. Mm. That's actually the the lower road, the military road going back to San Antonio, but you do have the Butterfield Trail, mm-hmm. uh, if it's not clearly demarked by name, uh, that trail, of course, comes in El Paso, and then up to Fort Fillmore, crosses the river, goes to Mesilla, and then it's outbound uh, to the west. And so, another great thing about some of these early maps, it does show the early routes of transportation, which is a, a, a um, an emerging Part yeah. of our national story. Absolutely here. And so one final map we want to make yeah. sure we mention that you got prepared here is then uh, this one from 1866. Then, yeah. of course, you know, during yep. and after that conflict there. Yep, yep. And what we have, um, uh, 
military outpost identified. Um, we have settlements. We no longer see the name Franklin, I right. believe. Okay. Yep. Uh, we see El Paso, and we see, I think you'll see, is it El Paso del Norte is still identified by name? Yep. It's kind of following more the the river up a little bit northern into the New Mexico area. There you have it. And, and so we have the international boundary clearly delineated. Yep. And you begin to see uh, north of El Paso, you begin to see some of the accuracies with the mountain ranges mm, and mm-hmm. with the with the actual um, uh, stage and mail routes with the uh, with trails um, many of them on the north south are spin-offs of the old Camino Real yep and of course those trails and its impact on it here so too we've got to take that next break right now coming out of this break talk about at least some of the historic preservation aspects that we also got going on here and how particularly camino real relates and these maps relate to some of them here so stay tuned for more on the el paso history radio show after this break here on news radio 690 ktsm you are listening to the el paso history radio show streaming on facebook where you can find archived radio programs the el paso history radio show also streams on the facebook page remember in el paso when run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano, and see their website at missiondelray.com, 915-440-2140, for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. Thank you all so very much for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. Still joined here in studio by Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces here. So we've been talking a lot about the maps and the, well, ways that they depict more or less accurately, sometimes less, the realities mm-hmm. of our region and how they've impact the politics and then the actual boundary setting and why, among those other things like, again, uh, Monument and Mile Marker 1, they can see in the foothills of Mount Cristo Rey, it did not exist there initially, and so it had to be placed there, and some of these maps affect that. But also, of course, the historic preservation aspects that you look at, including uh, some uh, properties that you're focusing on more recently, right? That is correct, and and um, um, very glad to hear the El Paso history radio moment that your dad produced uh, mm-hmm. uh, earlier. 
about my favorite architect, Mabel Welch. I mean, she mm-hmm. she and Henry Trost are my two favorite architects, yeah. and they just both happen to live and work right here in El Paso and, and design buildings all throughout the borderlands. And so uh, one of the things that um, uh, we're currently working on in Las Cruces, and I think many of your listeners and viewers will know, Las Cruces um, um, underwent a terrible episode of urban renewal in the end of the 1960s and the beginning mm-hmm. of the 1970s. And, and a lot of irreplaceable buildings were taken down uh, in the downtown along Main Street and the adjacent streets. And one of the, um, one of the trust buildings in town that um, is endangered, and there's a concerted effort in order to save it and put it back, uh, restore it and put it back into a productive use, is the former Las Cruces Country Club building. And I think we mm-hmm. have a picture of it right there. There you go. Yep. From about This photograph is from about 1940. Um, so at the time, the building would have been around 11 years of age. It opened up in, in uh, late September of, of 1929. It was That's about the time it was completed. The okay. first actual event that was held there was in the early part of October of, uh, of 1929. And, and this building has been mistreated over, over the years. And uh, the image you're looking at there, a really nice nighttime illuminated mm-hmm. shot of the country club. Um, the reason I wanted to show this building, uh, not only because it's a trust building and not just because it's uh, an endangered building, but because it, its back is turned toward uh, two significant roadways that, mm-hmm. that appear at different times on the very on on maps, maybe not the ones that we were looking at earlier, but in other maps of Las Cruces, southern New Mexico, mm-hmm. that show the Camino Real, which is literally the route of the Camino Real, is right behind this building. Mm. And another route is if for anyone who's familiar with Las Cruces, North Main Street, um, as it is heading eastward um, toward the Oregon Mountains, that road that led from the mines. Up in the or up near the town of Oregon, right there, right. up at San Augustine Pass. That's the road coming back into town that connects Las Cruces and Oregon. So mining history is right there. This later becomes the route for those men, in particular, anyone, men, women who worked at White Sands. Oh, of course. Okay, because that's the route that you would take um, uh, to ride over. White Sands and to work at the uh, missile range. Mm-hmm. And so layer upon layer of history is right behind the, the old country club building. And so there is there is a hidden story, just like we were mentioning, a hidden stories on maps. Right. You know, if you don't look closely enough on that 1859 map, you wouldn't notice that Pikes Peak is in Kansas. Okay. <laughs> and it's a whimsical yeah. little bit about it. So um, maps are are important to depict the land in which we live, but the buildings that we also cherish and celebrate and use are very much a part of of the overall understanding of the land in which we live. And so, in my mind at least, cartography, architecture, art, all of these humanistic activities are all embedded, they're all interconnected and intertwined, and they all have something to say about who we are at different points in time and what we value and how we look at ourselves. Absolutely. So again, our guest right now, this uh, couple hours of the show has been Troy Ainsworth, historic preservation specialist for the city of Las Cruces, as well, of course, former historic preservation officer for the city of El Paso. Thanks very much for being here to tell us about, well, it's history, some of these maps, the significance they have, not even just in their own way of depicting, but shaping the history and the borders of our region and all the things and the efforts you all are doing here today. So people want to get in touch with you. What's the best way to do so? Uh, email, first initial, last name, T. Ainsworth, at L-A-S hyphen process dot org O-R-G Alright, thanks very much, Troy. We'll see you all next week with more on the El Paso History Radio Show. I've been your host, Andrew J. Polk. Have a great weekend, y'all.